Okay. So today we are going to be looking at white ink. Um, Jennifer McGuire did a video on uh, using her favorite white ink. And um, so the one that we're using today is Gina K. And it's a really nice white ink. It's white and crisp when you stamp with it, which is really nice. And it also has a re-inker too. Okay. Does it, and it does come in a larger one too, but we just got the small ones, correct? We sold our big ones. We sold the big ones, but white, the little one works great. Okay. All right, we're gonna be making three cards using white ink. The first card we're going to be doing is this one here, and I'm using a floral stamp, and I'm going to heat emboss it with a clear embossing powder, and then we'll go from there. This one, I am using an embossing folder. And then this one, I am doing um, shadow stamping, which is very effective. And I think it looks better in person, but uh, it's a cool technique. All right, okay, so we're gonna start. So I'm gonna use a nice, this nice bright color here. And I'll use my smaller stamp platform because it fits better into the camera. All right, so I'll place my paper on. Now this stamp is by Studio Cadia. We have it in stock. It's called Lovely Blooms. And this is a really nice floral stamp. And we're going to be using it on for heat embossing. down there like that and I'm just going to put it this way because I'm doing all my cards very sim simple and with quite a bit of white background on them so I'm I just need that top half obviously if I was going to um, be making multiple cards I could do two out of this so I'm going to be using Versamark which is a watermark stamp watermark is sticky so the um, embossing powder sticks to it. My stamp is very contaminated, but it still works. Your ink pad. Or yeah, my ink pad's very contaminated. So I've just covered that stamp with my, I'm just gonna get my, with the ink. And I might do it two times depending. Sometimes it's hard to see. So because a stamp platform allows you to stamp again in the same spot, I'll just do it again. This is just a dry eraser and it adds even pressure when you stamp. It's a Jennifer McGuire thing. Okay, that looks pretty good. When you use a Versamark, it stamps on the paper one shade darker. So you can see that that is just one shade darker. Take that off. And I'll put my stamp over here. All right. So now I'm going to take some clear embossing powder. Do we have clear embossing powder in stock? And I left my little scoop at home. Oh well. I will use a piece of paper. I have a little white scoop. I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to use my embossing pad. We'll see how. Oh, it looks okay. I need little stickers on my on my embossing powder. We have a couple of clear gloss and a clear sparkle. So this is clear gloss, and this one has a little sparkle in it. So that would be nice too. All right. Thank you, Cindy. Okay, I'm gonna heat this up. We have ordered heat guns, they haven't come in yet. So when you're using a heat gun, you wanna heat it up first. And apparently that 
um, eliminates the paper from curling. So you wanna get it good and hot. So you need a heat gun. Um, a hair dryer just doesn't get hot enough. And now they have heat guns that have two speeds, which is very handy because you can not only heat emboss, but you can do a lower heat for drying ink. Okay, so I'm just melting it now and you can see it coming through. Now you don't want to overheat it. You can always tell if you've overheated. Well, you can burn the paper for starters, but your embossing um, will be totally flat if you've overheated it. So that's what happens. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my ink. And there's two ways of applying the ink. You can use a brush or you can use a sponge. Now a brush is, um, recommended for doing this type because I'm going right into the paper and then I'll show you what we use the other one for. So I'm just going to put some ink here. Another way you can do it is you can put your ink on your pad here and then pick it up on here. You can do that also. So it's in there and then I'm just going to go in a circle. Now using the brush you get a softer look than you would using the um, ink blending tool. So I'm just rubbing this over. Another neat thing you can do too is you can, so it softens your paper. So if you have a very wild paper, you can actually go over it with the white ink and it will soften the color and that's on your patterned paper. These inks, when you put the lid on them, they click, which is really nice. Then you can just take, I'm just got a, a microfiber cloth here and then you just rub it and see how that just comes to life. There we go. Looks very pretty. Nice and soft. I'm gonna go, you can go over it some more. Now, if I was using this, I'll show you the difference. Well, this will just be on paper, but this is a, a much darker. See the difference? That to that. So this is much darker when you do it. And I just wanted a soft, a brush just gives a very soft look. Now this brush, Cindy ordered these and it is called a Mini Ergo Blender Brush by Pink and Main. And it comes in two sizes. It comes in this size, and it also comes in a bigger size here. Let's look at that one. All right, so they come in two sizes. So, when you're using white ink, you should always just have a brush just for white ink. And you should always have a sponge just for white ink so you don't contaminate your ink pad, all right? Okay, so that's the first one. This is embossing and softening it with white ink. Now, I'll put all the cards together after. Now we're going to do, I put this embossing folder and it's called Bloom. All right, so it's got uh, flowers and leaves and whatever, and I chose green. So now on this one, I'm going to be using my ink blending tool with a sponge, only because I just want to get the top layer so I'm just gonna kind of dust it. So I'm just gonna go over it softly with 
the sponge. Now, if I had used my brush, I would have got more on the um, background, where this one I just want to kind of tickle the top. See that? So I'm just lightly rubbing on top of it, and it really pronounces those raised images. Looks very nice, very pretty. I had already cut this down because this um, would have been four and a quarter by five and a half. So there we go, very soft. Now the other thing you can do with this is if you want, you can do the other side and use it and I'll show you that. That looks so pretty. Okay, so now this would be the negative side. It's debossed. So I'm gonna go over top. And now this, all the debossed part is left green and the top is left white. See that? So that's kind of cool. Again, if I was using that brush, it would have gone right into that backing, which the debossing, which you don't want. So I'm just rubbing this on top and you can see the green stays. Just get that very soft look. So those are two totally different looks from your embossing. Embossing and debossing. So that is your debossing. Looks nice. And then you flip it over and that is your embossing. So there's two different looks. You can always go back. And you can even just kind of wipe it off a bit. Ta da Very nice. Okay, so that is using the embossing folder right here. So embossing, debossing, and I used an ink blending tool. I'll go over all the products after. All right, now this is the fun one. And I chose a vibrant color. I think it looks, I tried different colors, but I thought the uh, vibrant one or a, a brighter one looked nicer. I tried it on craft and I tried it on um, a pink, but I really liked this color. So this is called shadow stamping. So I'm gonna put it in here and I have my sticky grid in there. Now this is a new stamp that Cindy ordered and actually it was on Jennifer's um, video it's called Dandelion Greenery. And we have this in stock. Um, we've sold some of them. I think we have eight left. Do we? Yeah, eight left. But we can always get more. And then I'll tell you something funny about it. After. Seven left because someone must have bought them. Okay. Or you're showing one, maybe. I don't know. Right, there was nine. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. It's very lovely. Okay, and then I'm just going to put it on here like that. I could actually, oh, I'll just leave it like that. No, I'm going to put it more in the middle because I do go off on it. All right. Okay, so I'm going to lay this down. Now, the first part of this card I am going to do it in black, okay? So pick that up, and I'm using um, VersaFine Flare. I love this ink. All right. So I'm stamping that. And 
this is quite a fresh ink, so I don't really need to um, do it twice. Now I am going to wipe a little bit of this off because it will go right onto my paper and in case I want to move it, it will just leave a mark. So I'm just going to wipe that off and just pat it dry. And then I'm going to put it right here. Now I'm using the same stamp over and over because I'm just putting it on different angles, so then it kind of takes on a whole new look. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that there. And remember, I'll be cutting the bottom part off. So we'll put that right there. Perfect. The black looks so nice. So again, I'm just going to, I've used this stamp so much already. I always keep my little baby wipes in a little container like this so I don't get it on um, my papers. Sometimes I'll put a baby wipe and then my paper gets on it and oh, what a mess. All right, so then I'm just gonna put this one here. Like that. It is gonna hang over a bit, but I think it will be okay. There we go. sure you if you get it on the side there you want to make sure you take it off any ink and then I'll end up finish with putting one right here like that as I said I'm gonna be cutting them off so that's all done. Now on this stamp there's also dandelion flowers and some other little flowers which are really pretty. I'm going to be doing some more things with white ink next week and I'm going to be using this stamp again. You can see the dandelions here and then there's these tiny little flowers. So one of the techniques you can do with white ink, I can use these flowers on that. And they also have a singleton here so if you're wanting to do a little fill in or something like that, they have that little extra leaf there, okay? All right, so what I wanna do now is I wanna dry this. I wanna make sure it's dry or else it will contaminate my white ink that I'm gonna. So I'm actually gonna take it off of here and dry it. So this is where if you had a heat gun that had two settings on it, you could use it for drying. You especially want to make sure it's dry if you are going to heat emboss and put embossing, like do this and then use white embossing on it. Because if not, and I'm speaking from experience, I tried it, you'll just get one big blob of embossing powder. All right, now I am going to take my stamp and I want to make sure it's nice and clean because now I am going to stamp over top of this with white ink. As you can see, I've used this stamp quite a bit when I was practicing and creating different things. All right, so now when you put this on, 
you can see right here where the stem is and that's what my used as my guide so I put my stamp now I'm gonna have to push this down because I've got to put my head so I can see it so you just put this on your stamp where it was just put it right on top so if I'm not dead on it's because I can't see it <laughs> okay just let me see here I think that's it. It's much easier when you can look at it head on. Okay, so then you're just gonna move it just a little bit over and you can see under there like that. Because you're just offsetting it, okay? So I think that's I think that's good. If not, we'll see. Okay, so now I'm taking my white Gina K ink and I'm gonna go over top of my stamp. And that's why you want to make sure your stamp was nice and clean so that you didn't get that black on it. Okay, and now I'm just gonna put this over. And there we go. So you can just see how it's, mine's over a little too far, but that's because I can't, I'm not looking at it very well, but you can see how you do it. You really need it, you really need to do it head on. I'll try it on this one head on. There, that one worked better. And if you want it to be darker, I'll show you the difference. You can add a second coating of ink and it will be darker. See that? Okay, so then, and I'm not really cleaning in between here because this one doesn't tend to stick like the other. I'll try this one now. So I'm going to have to go out of sight here. Or you'll see my hair or something. And then I'm just going to slide it over. Plus my lighting here isn't the greatest. All right. And let's have a peek. Yep, yeah, that one looks good. Want to do it again? You can do it again. There we go. Now I'm going to pick this up a little bit. I'm just going to slide it over to do this one. So again, I'm going to take it on a view here. Slide it over a little bit. That might have been too far, but we'll see. There we go. But it really is a cool effect. Okay. Clean my stamp off. those out of the way all right so that is shadow stamping so it's kind of cool okay now we can make some cards
<clears throat> now my cards, these cards ended up being four by five and a quarter because, why? oh, because I cut the paper too short because I thought I was going to have to have a um, border around it, but I didn't need a border. But these cards that I'm making today are four and a quarter by five and a half. So I am going to leave this at four and a quarter, which it should be right there. And I'm gonna cut it a bit off the bottom here. And I'll cut it right there. All right, so there's one. And then this one it's four and a quarter and I'll do this one at three and this one is four and a quarter and I'll do this one at three no nope, this one will be smaller okay I'm gonna leave my cutter here because I'm gonna show you what else I did. No, I'll put it here. All right, I'm gonna take my card. Get my gun out here. So I'm going to take, this is the first one I did with my embossing, heat embossing. So I'm going, these are top fold cards I did. So I'm just gonna put this at the top. Like that. And then I wanted to have a little border, but I didn't have any border dies at home. So what I did was, I'm gonna show you, and here's a little tip and trick that you can do. So this is a Studio Cadia slimline die. So I cut that one and I cut this one. All right, so then what I did was, I thought this was pretty smart. I took this and I cut it off right along the second line of dots. Oops. I did that. Sorry. right along the first line of dots. Okay, and then I've got my little border. Take those out. I've got a little scallop border that I wanted. All right, and then I'm gonna do it again on this side because I want that border for another card. I thought I had the borders that I wanted, but I often sell things. <laughs> so this one just has a nice little stitched line. So I thought that would be nice. So I'm gonna use that on another card. So then I have that little stitched line, okay? So there we go. All right, back to my card. So then I'm gonna take this little border and I'm gonna put it on here like that. See that? So I'm just gonna run some adhesive down it and I'm gonna put it right here. I'll do my stamping of my sentiments all together at the end. So I have that there and then just to add a little shine to it, I have a little strip of silver right here. 
Now I could put the silver on first and then the black. And it just gives me another eighth of an inch in length. All right, so I'm gonna put that right here. And this was just a scrap of silver that I had. And then I'm gonna put this on. Like that. Looks like I need to trim my card a bit. And then I'll just trim the sides. cutter again. I love this cutter. I'm just going to trim that off and then on the bottom I'm going to trim it a little bit. There we go. Okay, so there's that card. And on this one I'll do my sentiments after. Okay, next card. I have this one. And then we did this one. All right, so I'm gonna attach that. And I'll put that right on the top. You could put it at the top or the bottom. trimming that off and then let me see what I have here I'm going to use this again and I'll put it around the bottom there's little holes here that I need to pop out so again this is just I just cut down my slimline scallop by Studio Cadia there we go and I'm using my tape gun I like to use this for attaching things like that put it across there and then I have a silver for this one too I just thought it added a little zip to it. Whoops, wrong one. I didn't want to use that tape on here. So let's see if I can correct it. So maybe so I can put this here. like that. And then this one can go here. Like that. There we go. All right, so now I'll just trim those off okay so that is with the um, embossing folder and I'll just give that a little trim so that is the embossing And I know lots of you have lots of embossing folders to do that with. Okay, next. I have this one. 
day. So, so you could do um, multiple cards using these techniques because I'm just using half of the paper. Well, I know what I did wrong. That's why you use removable tape. I added, I had a little flower here. So just to show you how you can use up scraps. This was sitting on my table from when I did my scrap cards. So I'm just going to put that on there like that. Kind of adds to it. There. All right, now this one. I am going to put, I'll add some more adhesive on this. Now I want the white dots to show, so I'm just going to lay that across the top like that. And then I have a silver strip again. So I'll just put that on. Seems awfully quiet in here. I'm just a quiet person. You are being very quiet over there, Cindy. And I think the silver looks really nice with that blue. There we go. And just trim those up. All right. Whoa. All right. So now we have made three cards. One, two, three. Maureen said I should sing a song, but I think that would not be good. <laughs> I'm not sure if she has a voice. I only sing for small children <laughs> or in large groups. I sing for small children, but even they say, put it on pause, Grandma. Put it on pause. Okay. Now, I am using this Penny Black stamp. We do have it in stock, and it has some great sentiments on it. All right, so let's get those on our cards. So this one, I am going to put happy moments, happy thoughts, happy dreams. And I'm just going to put it over to the right like that. Now, on these cards, they're very simple, but you could certainly add like a flower or something like that. And just put it on the left. So there we go. Happy moments, happy thoughts, happy dreams. And that's another. This is a really nice sentiment stamp. If you don't already have it, it's a good one to get. And then, and you can, you'll recognize I've used it before. Here's a happy birthday. straighten that out. Looks kind of crooked. 
Is everybody crafting today? It's colder out there. No, today's the day it warms up during the day. Oh. So we don't know anything different yet for opening. We still are going to encourage you to do curbside and um, delivery. Don't forget we can deliver for you. Because once we open up, we can only have one or two people in our store at a time. And curbside pickup is working very well. It is right now two degrees Celsius. Yeah. There we go. All right, this one, I am going to put. Everybody loves the cards. Good. We have tomorrow's for a reason. That's kind of cute. Oh, this one's nice. This is one of my favorite days celebrating you. I think I'm gonna use that. Uh, I like this one. Happy moments, happy thoughts, happy dreams. I just love that. All right, we'll just do that one again. Pretty, pretty. So like I said, you can certainly add whatever you want to them, but they're very simple cards. All right. So there we go. Shadow stamping, heat embossing with white ink, and dry embossing with an embossing folder and white ink. And then you can always come back and add whatever you want. Add away. All right, so there you go, there's three cards three different ways of using this white ink. So, Gina K, pigment ink, all right? Used with a brush, and you can also use the other long-handled brushes too. And 